Camo, camo, camo. Come on, camo couture. Did you see my lights flicker? What is going on? You're going down. Um, ba 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 ba. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Hey, Miss Mojo fans, it is Sam here to recap episode four of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 5. Now, because I'm going to be getting into specific details from the episode, a spoiler alert is in effect, and you can stick around to the end so you can see our sweet, sweet scorecard and see who is at the top and the bottom of this competition. Because if you can handle a scandal, your walk of shame could lead you to the Hall of Fame. So the challenge this week is an improv challenge, SheMZ. The queens are split up into groups to do different scenes as if they are caught on camera by Ross Matthews, a TMZ paparazzo. Challenge has another side where they're in a room discussing all the skits with Carson Kressley's Harvey Levin character. The runway this week is Come On Camo Couture with guest judge Sarah Hyland. A bunch of you know her from Modern Family, among other things. Let's get going. So before we get to the challenge, just gonna set up the drama for this week. A lot of it revolves around Shay being in the bottom. Now I know a lot of people weren't happy about this. We don't have to call anyone names over it, but Alexis and Mayhem getting called out for trying to boot off Shay. They thought it was strategic. The other girls were not on board. <laughs> This backfired on my ass. This creates a little drama, especially between Shay and Alexis, that is really fun to watch throughout the episode. I think that really played to their advantage in the challenge. So let's just get right to the challenge. The girls are split up into three groups. The first one is Shay and Alexis. Kind of joking about how they're typecast as themselves. Oh, this is so, she was so close to real life. <laughs> I think this was good to help them thrive. Next group is Juju Cracker and Blair. Their scene was a bit different, obviously. It was a scandal around admittance to drag you. And the third one, India and Mayhem playing out a little shoplifting scene. First up, we get Alexis and Shay. We ran into Shea Coulee and Alexis Mateo having lunch. It plays off of their dynamic where Shea is the icy cold perfectionist and Alexis is a hot mess. And they're out to lunch together, best frenemies sort of thing. Ross runs into them. They have a fun scene where they kind of play off each other and up the stakes with them, some pregnancy stuff, some wig snatching. I thought it was good fun all around. I definitely saw Shea as the stronger performer, but I think their chemistry worked really, really well this week, especially since they knew they could kind of play into each other and play off of each other. I think this was a brilliant performance. Next up was the Drag You scandal. scandal you -less. Scan scandal you -less. The she MZ scandal of the drag. You. <clears throat> a pretty strong comedic team. Juju was mentioned as like the strongest, but we always know Cracker can pull out some jokes. Blair's there not letting herself fall into the background, which I think is really smart in that group. We were in there and there was a red lining. Oh, how dare you. Juju B was to me the funniest one there. Cracker, the judges loved it, but it seemed a little rehearsed for an improv challenge for me. I know our friendship has been over more bumps than your foundation stick. What I appreciate in improv actors is the yes and. Sarah Highland actually brought this up with Juju B. You were always a yes and type of improv actor and I really really appreciated that. Okay so last up we have Mayhem and India. Not sure if this was a purposeful typecasting but India playing a shoplifter opening up about her past with shoplifting and trying to use that to her and their advantage. There was also a bit more talk about stories that Queens had with the law. Blair's DUI brought up a story Mayhem had. I thought it was a really poignant moment in the episode when Mayhem talked about the abuse she suffered at the hands of the police. That's certainly a story that's not going away. They made me strip down naked. Oh my God. To nothing in front of everyone else that was being booked that night. And actually one of the officers uh, took a, a picture of me and You're they laughed. Mayhem being vulnerable and opening up to us and we're always grateful for that. So factoring in all that, factoring in all these stories that make these queens who they are and the characters they're playing, we go to Mayhem and India's sketch. This one had a strange momentum to it. I'll say that. Uh, I didn't know why it went where it went when it went there. I'm a liquor. <sighs> But at least they brought it back at the end with the vase coming out of the, the jaws. India went all in and started licking the glass, which is so 2019. Uh, not gonna see many people doing that in 2020. 
They were all in on this performance, but it just felt like they were directionless. Whereas Shane Alexis had more deliberate moments. I'd argue that Cracker had too many deliberate moments. This kind of felt aimless and it took Ross to get them back on track. What was your favorite? Let us know. Obviously, I have my opinions. We get to the judges' opinions, but we want to hear from you. So then we get to the main stage. As we said, the theme this week is camouflage couture. Couture to camouflage. I don't know. I feel like uh, Will Ferrell doing some pan-European camouflage. So first up to the stage was Jujube, and her concept was kind of camouflaging the camouflage. I really loved it. The cape was gorgeous. They mentioned it could have had like a wow piece. I thought it was great through and through. Hair, makeup, details, colors on point. Next to the stage, we had Miss Cracker in her like pop star Madonna to Britney. I got a little punk rock vibes from it too. It was almost too far. It was just not too far. And that's what I appreciate about it. It was all really precise and never got too busy, even though it kind of threatened to go there. And so after Miss Cracker was Miss Blair St. Clair doing a more literal take on the camouflage. I liked her Poison Ivy themed color scheme. I thought the red and the green worked really, really well together. The shoulder pieces could have been a bit more shaped for me, but I loved everything on the legs, everything from the torso down, the eyes, the wig, the... Ooh, I love me some Blair St. Clair. Next up to the stage, we had Shea kool doing kind of this blue take on the camo. Shea kool had this really cool thing going on where she contrasted the camo against this really housewifey bonnet, big hair, 60s vibe, kind of flashing us some tush for a bit. I thought it was really cute, adorable. Shea knows how to work a runway. Next to the stage was Alexis Mateo. She gives us this beautiful hunter's camouflage, gorgeous white camo for the winter. Michelle Michelle was talking about how it made her stand out from the more traditional camouflage. I definitely agree. I love a Snow Queen moment. After Alexis Mateo, we had Mayhem Miller giving us self-described Black Barbie in a war zone. I think the colors were super on point, but just after seeing Jujubee with a cape, I, I instinctually wanted something like that. Didn't seem to be much story going on. If she wanted to do the Barbie in a war zone, she could have kind of taken that further too. But as always, she on point. And then next to the stage, we had India Farah giving this draping, dramatic camo cape with the slicked back hair. She has the dark black latex look. I really, really love the hair on this one. It's not something we're used to from India. We're used to the stuff we saw in the challenge, you know, the big old breastplate and the big curly hair. This was a kind of new dimension where it showed she's not gonna come with the same thing every week. Not that she has been, but I was excited by this look. Everyone has their favorites. Some work for some people, some work for others, some don't work at all. They were all working this week's runway, so let us know who you think was working the workiest in the comments below. Right after the runway, Rue makes some decisions. The first two that can leave the stage safe are Shea kool and Blair St. Clair. Not a bad place to be, not where you want to be forever. And then the top this week is Jujube and Cracker for their powerhouse comedy performances in the Drag You Scandalo. In the Drag You Lo Scandalo. Telenovela, SheMZ, Escandalo. I'll just do that again, just in case. So the top two this week are Jujube and Cracker for their powerhouse performances. If I'm going down, you're going down. I have gone down. I know you're going down. The rest are critiqued as the bottom. Alexis Mateo, Mayhem Miller, and India Farah. And Mamaru lets me down just a little bit by not picking Jujube to win this. Miss Cracker gets the competition. Well deserved. Not my first pick. But hey, not my TV show. Cracker had a beautiful runway look. We love to see it. I also like Juju's, but Cracker's did seem a little more couture. I, I can see myself wearing Juju's though. Just a cape moment. Ugh, I love it. So Cracker wins. Juju B is safe. Alexis Mateo also safe. And we are left with the bottom two of Mayhem and India. Everyone's sent to the back to deliberate, do their whole thing. We know the deal by now. There's the winner, there's the jury. We're gonna see what happens. I was pretty sure Mayhem was gonna make it. She's been on this narrative of, look at me, I have the most to give. I'm just blossoming in this competition. And it really seemed like she opened up and had something else to give this week. Then when it got into the room and they started making their case, Mayhem was very flase da, let's say, about whether or not she wanted to stay. Whereas India was there fighting and ready for it. Why do you think you should be here and deserve to be here? I think that everyone can see my drive and they can see my passion for drag. This is why India is such a formidable talent in this competition. 
is that she's never giving up and there's such a tenacity there. So everyone makes their decisions and we go out to the stage and the lip sync assassin this week is none other than Miss Morgan McMichaels from season two and All Stars 3. Why you mad? Why you mad? Why you mad? Cracker and Morgan compete to Rihanna's Where Have You Been? There's some energy in this song. There's some lip sync. I found it didn't start off too hot. But once Cracker started doing her like in from the side thing, I was totally on board. Then we got to a part where Cracker was breaking it down, doing her spinning leg and Morgan McMichaels was like doing jump rope over it. It turned into a ball. Everyone was having so much fun on that stage. So the winner of the lip sync is announced to be Morgan McMichaels, which gagged me, had me gagged. I was fully gagged, gagging. But then I asked myself, why are you gagging so? She bring it to you every ball. And of course, RuPaul brought it to us and said that the winner of the lip sync was also Ms. Cracker. So both of them win, potentially eliminating two queens from this whole fray. Morgan goes first, reveals the queen that the jury chose. That queen is unfortunately Mayhem. And then Cracker goes and reveals the one that she picked, which is also Mayhem. So India survives a double lipstick elimination really showing her determination over Mayhem, who a lot of people think had more to give this competition. Mayhem, unfortunately, 0 for 2 on improv challenges, but a fierce queen nonetheless. Mayhem, we're gonna miss you. Mais c'est la vie. And now that brings us to our leaderboard. Jujubee being in the top keeps her at the top with four and a half points. Right behind her, Miss Cracker wins her way into second place with three and a half points, followed by Blair St. Clair with two and a half, Shea Coulee with one and a half, Alexis with one point, and India at the bottom with negative one point. Next, we're going to switch into our power rankings, which is just in the last three weeks. Normally, this can shake some things up, but we see mostly the same thing shake out. Jujubee still in the top with four points in the last three weeks. Behind her, still Miss Cracker with two and a half. Blair with two points, Shea with one and a half, Alexis at zero points in the last three weeks, and India, unfortunately, being in the bottom the last three weeks has put her at minus three points. So a lot of the time we see the standings change when we do the power rankings. It does not seem to be the case right now. The standings are the standings is the standings. So that is it for us. Be sure to let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Who is your favorite improv group? Who was your favorite runway? Did you like the Lip Sync Assassin this week? Tell us all of it. We want to hear it. We read through it every week. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that good stuff. You can follow us on Instagram at MissWatchMojo. You can follow me on Instagram at TheBDZ or on Twitter at BDZ. We will be here same time, same place next week, recapping the goods. Until then... I bid you adieu, bonsoir, au revoir, bye bye.